What up? What's good? You know what it is. My name is Jazz Free Love and welcome back to Free Love TV. Today we're going to be talking 8 reasons why South African hip hop won't prosper like USA hip hop anytime soon. So without any waste of time, let's get it then. So before I get into today's video, I would like to make it clear that I'm not comparing SA Hip Hop to USA Hip Hop because they're evidently not the same. The USA is obviously bigger than South Africa and has a larger population. And that means more people to convert into hip hop fans since like the fucking 1970s. And that's why hip hop is the biggest genre of that side. It fucking started there. In South Africa, hip hop is more or less like 20 years old and we haven't been able to take it to number one like that. I mean, we did kill it between the years 2014 and 2017, but we're just not the biggest thing yet. So let's get into them reasons then. Number one, our artists do not collaborate. We have way too many egos clashing. South African hip hop artists think their machismo is way important than putting on for their fans. And that's why we still haven't gotten that AK and Casper, that Aries and Nasty C, that MT and Flame. I mean, look at how Drake and Chris Brown linked up for Nicki Minaj's joint when they deadass hated each other's guts. I mean, collaboration has always been key. The biggest hits in hip hop history have always been two or more cats linking up and making magic. And this side is always the same damn collabs. It's never anything new. So reason number two, our artists wanna be begged for music. You see motherfuckers go on Twitter and be like, yo, 10,000 retweets and I'll drop the song as if we're the ones who asked them to be musicians. They go on Instagram and be like, yo, 10k comments and I'll leak the project. Like, yo, my man, if you don't want to drop the damn thing, then don't. Signing. We'll forget about you and find someone just as good or even better. You just cannot make your fans put in work for music. I mean, we're already buying and streaming your shit. What more do you want? We ain't finna worship your punk ass. Reason number three, our artists are interested in other genres. If you identify as an artist who does a certain genre, stick to that. If you want to go do R&B, go to r and my man. If you want to rap, then go in, cuz pop off. If you want to go do Ama Piano, then go. But you can't do everything, you just can't. All the motherfuckers who became great at what they do chose one thing. They worked on one thing and worked on only that one thing, polished it, and then became the grandmasters of their craft. Quentin Tarantino didn't dabble in goddamn music videos or sitcoms. No documentaries, no series, just cinema. And that's why he's one of the top three film directors of all time. He stuck to what he's good at and now he's the GOAT. I mean, you can be cohesive if you want to. If you want to mix genres and create something new, then go for it. Ricky Rick did it on Unga's niche. But you can't be fucking all over the place and doing every genre like some kind of music industry hall. You first made your way in by becoming a rap. We loved you because you did that thing particularly well. Pram Pram Big Homies are now doing house music Libo Heavy K. How? Nani? Pram Pram Big Homies are now doing Kom Libo Babe Zotu. How sweet? Pram Pram Big Homies are now doing Ama Piano Libo Gabza Libo Maboris. You're confusing the fucking fans. You cannot be at the forefront of every genre. It's like being a politician and telling people to vote for other parties. Pick a struggle, motherfucker. So reason number four is gatekeepers slash industry cock blockers. You probably heard this term before, but I'm gonna explain it for people who haven't. Gatekeepers slash industry cock blockers are these fucking rich people who have the power to decide who gets to be played on radio, who gets to be on TV, who's getting the shows, and who's getting the campaigns. If you've ever asked yourself why you keep hearing the same female rappers on a certain radio station, it's probably because of a fucking female DJ gatekeeper who's hell-bent on playing only her friends. Gatekeepers get to have a say that, nah, we don't want this group of people in the music industry. We only want people who sound like this and we only want people who look like this. We only want people who talk about this. And that is why fucking dope artists on the rise are getting overlooked. Cause this female rapper has dark skin and she doesn't post news on her Instagram. We won't play her music video on these TV channels. Cause this female rapper is talking about spirituality instead of promoting such shit like the Cardi B's and the Megan the Stallions. We won't play on radio. Cause this kid doesn't have tattoos and doesn't want to wear chains and push the pretty boy narrative. We won't give him a record deal. This is killing the industry in more ways than one. Reason number five. SA rappers do not have a sense of fraternity. These motherfuckers are all about themselves. Trust me, that can be a good thing. You gotta get your racks up and feed your family. But when a star player starts to think about their own glory more than the teams, then the only person who's gonna win is the player, not the team. That's why when you look at individual rappers' careers, you find that niggas are prospering. Niggas are prospering, but the culture as a whole is dying out. Reason number six. SA rappers drop music once in a blue moon. When last did El Tito 
drop a record. Like Mugs dropped an album in 2017. No promo, no press run, no interviews, no music videos, and then it disappeared only to appear like three years later on a couple of features with niggas like Kulichana and Stogie T. Where's Ginger Trail? Where's Envy? Where's Solo? Where's Kid X? Where the fuck is Kid Teeny? Niggas are lazy. 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 Inconsistency is the root of all evil in this case. These niggas are giving other genres more room to shine. I mean, we're supposed to be suffocating these motherfuckers with new music every week. Back in 2016-17, niggas were getting the shwerk. Next week, Next week is MT on a song with Tiwa Savage. Next week is Aries with me while in Honeydew. Next week is AKN Anat with Don't Forget to Pray. Next week is DJ Speaster with Vicky featuring Stogie T and fucking J. Claude. That other week it's Questa on a record with Wale. It was insane. Other genres didn't even get a chance to breathe. Now it's like Forest Hills Drive for these cats the way there's so much oxygen. And trust me, no one is breathing in harder than the Amapiano cats. They're inhaling it all in. Reason number seven. Almost everyone sounds the same. Casper once explained this beautifully in his interview with Charlemagne the God and the Breakfast Club. He said the main reason why a lot of South African cats are sounding like American cats is because of radio. Radio doesn't play 90% local content. As a matter of fact, they play more international content than local. So that means if you really want to get the spins from radio and TV, you're gonna have to sound like you're not from here. You have to sound like the people getting the spins in order to get the spins. And this kills the culture because everyone just ends up sounding like everyone. And no one wants to hear the same shit over and over. The Six God said it himself. Every song sounds like Drake featuring Drake. And number eight, riding waves. When there's a new style that pulls up, you hear like 17 niggas jump on that. It happened with the Afro Beast wave. All my dudes are collaborating with niggas from Central or Northern Africa. All them niggas were on that Wizkid and Davido, or that Runtown and Burner Boy. It was embarrassing. It also happened with the Trap Wave. Everyone wanted to sound like Future. Everyone was pulling up with the 808s, the Auto Tune, the Dark Instrumentals, and everyone was rapping about Lean and Promethazine and popping bottles in the club and throwing money on some strippers' asses. It also happened when the Drill Wave pulled up. The UK niggas did it first, Pop Smoke pulled up and made it global, then everybody jumped in. It was crazy. It sounded like UK colonized Africa again. And for those reasons, we will never get to the top as a genre. Who knows, maybe things will change. My advice to all hip hop cats who might watch this by mistake, be authentic. We have different personalities, so it's impossible for us to want to produce the same sound. Yes, you can be inspired, but do not Bite. Niggas may be doing it to pop, but the shit here is longevity. If you come up with your own sound and stick to one genre, you'll be a pioneer. Niggas gonna try to bite you, but there can only be one originator. With that being said, that's me from the Blue Room. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, do everything, run it up. Who knows, we might save someone's career, or maybe even take hip hop to number one again. So, that's me from the Blue Room. Free Love TV, we out.